Hello everyone, I have a very special episode for you today. This is a first for my channel. The Kickstarter campaign I'm going to show you today was cancelled before I could even finish my video. But the project is still alive, so it is still relevant. It's confusing, let's just start from the beginning. PGS, the portable console for PC games. Alright, first things first, when you start playing a pitch video and you realize that they just barely started drawing their device, then you know things are not going that well. But trust me on this, just keep watching. Hi Kickstarter, today I will show you the true next generation of portable gaming. Alright, now I did not alter this video at all, you could check it yourself, this is just how it appears on the Kickstarter page. His voice is out of sync with his lips, obviously it's dubbed. They probably wanted to get rid of his foreign accent, but here's a tip for anybody who wants to make a pitch video, especially if they don't speak English. Do not worry about your foreign accent. There's something that us Americans like about accents. We just kind of assume that anybody with a European accent is, you know, somehow smarter than us. You know, they're probably healthier and they don't know what a McRib is, and they probably ride a bike everywhere. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Take advantage of the accent that you have. I'm not kidding you, it will help you out. But you know what, I'm sorry that I went off topic, because you're gonna find out that the dubbing issue, that is the least of their problems. Most people like portable gaming, but it had some problems. Almost all mobile games are too casual, touchscreen is uncomfortable for most game genres, tablets have the same problems, and they're too big for comfortable gaming. Existing portable game consoles are too weak, and games are very expensive. First of all, that statement just doesn't make any sense, because a tablet and especially a phone are not too big for portable gaming. He then complains about the power of mobile devices and the price of games, which are two problems that I don't think this Kickstarter is ever going to solve. So really, he's just complaining about things that he doesn't have a solution for just to get you on his side. His arguments don't really go anywhere. Furthermore, they rarely have AAA class games. PGS. Revolution now. Wait, 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 let's hear that again. It can't be. PGS. Revolution now. Beams. Holy shit, it is! They got the Honest Trailers guy to say their name. I didn't know you could do that, I wonder what he charges. Maybe I can hire him. PGS is a portable gaming system based on PC version of Windows 10. PGS can natively run PC games. PC games? On portable devices? Alright, what they're doing here is really strange. Because usually in a Kickstarter pitch, you know, somebody will be trying out the hardware. So why do they have anecdotes from people who are apparently just watching the pitch video? Well, in case you couldn't have guessed by now, spoiler alert, they have no prototype. It has become possible thanks to the new generation of ultra-low power chips that gives us the power of gaming PC with smartphone power consumption. The power of gaming PCs with smartphone power consumption. I am not even going to explain what's wrong with that. Have fun in the comments, guys. We have brought together... I think I'm the only one who ever knows that trophy right there. I really wonder what that trophy was awarded for. Hmm, I wonder if it was for acting. We have brought together incredible Japanese engineers. Ah yes, every project needs Japanese engineers. Thank you for that compliment wrapped in a stereotype. And wonderful industrial designers. And wonderful industrial designers. Specifically the Mokohete. Yeah, I think they're right on that. We want to create the best thing in the portable gaming world. We have come a long way to revolutionize it. From sketches and concepts to functioning prototypes, PGS supports all games, including software supported by your PC or laptop. Using wireless monitor, wireless mouse, keyboard, and audio system, you can use PGS as a desktop PC. Hey, wait a second, PGS. When's the last time you saw a Cyrillic keyboard in Detroit? And with that, you have the first clues to where these guys come from. They're Russian. Now I feel like I have to make a point here, and some of you might disagree with it. But they're not being all that upfront that it is a Russian project. And I gotta tell you, there are two places in this world I will not buy a product from. There's Nigeria and Russia. Now I'm sure there are great legitimate businessmen in both countries, but I'm sorry I just avoid them, it's too risky. I've heard too many horror stories. And anyways, come on, name me one good thing that's come out of Russia that didn't have a size 26 waist or begin with the letters AK. You can't! It doesn't exist! It ain't their cars, that's for damn sure. You can use PGS as a desktop PC. You won't even have to take it out of your pocket. 
Alright, this is why I like their campaign so much. You sort of have to, like, shut off your brain in order to buy what they're saying. Let's hear that again. You can use PGS as a desktop PC. You won't even have to take it out of your pocket. You can use it as a desktop PC, and you don't even have to take it out of your pocket. How in the world does that make any fucking sense? It doesn't. Just shut off your brain and keep watching. PGS has Lipol battery, which gives you about five hours of unbelievable portable gaming. Our console has a crystal quality. Let's hear it again. Our console has a crystal quality. And again. Our console has a crystal quality. And just one more time. Our console has a crystal quality. Quadrophonic audio system. Merging two high DPI displays gives ability to combine the gaming process with such functions as, for example, the ability to watch videos on YouTube. Alright guys, believe me, I'm not trying to make fun of him, but let's break down what he just said right there. He says that the dual displays gives ability to combine the gaming process with such functions as, for example, gives ability to combine the gaming process with such functions as, for example, that is some amazingly sloppy English. The ability to watch videos on YouTube. Our dream is to make the portable world better. Okay, what the hell did they just say? I think what they said was help us to make it to you. And I love that girl on the left. They should give her that trophy. PGS. Revolution now. Thank you, Honest Trailers, man. And that's their pitch video. All right, now we got a lot to talk about on this one. There are so many red flags that are going off here. It's amazing that they were able to raise over three times their goal before canceling. But we'll get back to that. That's another red flag all on its own. First off, you don't know these people. Now, I'm not a social butterfly by any means, but I don't think this is how conversations work. Hi, Kickstarter. Today, I will show you the- Uh, hi. My name is not Kickstarter, and who the fuck might you be? Seriously, imagine if this guy showed up at your door. Hi, Kickstarter. Today, I will show you the true next generation of portable gaming. Who the fuck are you? They don't show the team or name anyone in their pitch. And that's usually just basic info that people include on the campaign page. Aren't people usually proud of their campaigns? People typically like to be recognized for this major project in their lives. I don't think I'm the only person who asked that, but don't worry, after enough people complained they finally came forward with their team. Because of course providing basic information only after you've received enough complaints is the correct way to manage a Kickstarter campaign. And oh man, Russian is such a beautiful language. Did you know that the name Alan Williams translates into Russian as Kostas Lucky? Who knew? Oh and also apparently he is an actor, so I guess we're gonna need another trophy. And remember their indispensable Japanese engineer? Well, his name is Sergei Kirimov. We've also got their head of strategy and finance, Artur Krantz, who I can assure you has never appeared on the cover art of a Grand Theft Auto game, and their CEO, Nadir Mursalov. You're gonna see a lot of him later. But for now, let's look at Lola Kochakova. I'm not even gonna tell you what she does. I want you to guess. Is she an actress? A legal affairs manager? Or a mafia heiress? Go ahead and make your selection. Alright, now if you answered all of the above, then you are correct! Alright, first off, she does claim to be an actress. So go ahead and add another award to the shopping list. Oh wait a second, why didn't she act in the pitch video? Lola, act like you're worth something. Alright, and her father is... Alimzan Tokshtako... whatever. And his friends describe him as... A gregarious and generous patron of artists and athletes. Or, according to authorities, he might be a sinister figure in drug dealing, gun running, and auto theft. And when his friends said that he was a generous patron of artists and athletes, I wonder if they were referring to the accusation that he bribed the ice skating judges in the 2002 Winter Olympics. And get this, they apprehended him in Italy, and Lola was with him over there, and they pointed a gun at her. That is some crazy shit. Also, apparently the United States has an arrest warrant out for him on fraud-related charges. But he's not in hiding or anything, he lives openly in Russia. Поймали, как говорят, мое имя, и хотят везде втыкать. And as recent as 2013, he was charged with running an illegal gambling ring based out of the United States. No word on whether it was CSGO related though. Now just a disclaimer, that's all just accusations. There's no proof that Almizan is tied to the PGS campaign, or that Lola's involved with all the sinister shit that he does. But if we're going to approach the evidence like that, then I could just as easily argue that she is no legal affairs manager. So then what does she do? 
Why am I including all the info about her father? Well, as much as PGS loves to recruit from the theater department, I doubt they have a need for another actor, especially for one that never appeared in the pitch video. I have my own theories, but let's just say I have a feeling that her job title is a typo, and they forgot to add an IL to the beginning of it. And now let me tell you about PGS's investors, which I don't really have a lot to say about because they keep telling us about their investors, but they won't tell us anything else about who they are or where they came from. And what they're doing makes no fucking sense. When I first heard about PGS, it was on the Dingunity forums. And PGS was telling us that they have investors, so they don't even need to do a Kickstarter campaign. They said they were just going to sell the product once it's ready. I had my doubts, and sure enough, they did go to Kickstarter. They claim that the investors are forcing them to go to Kickstarter before releasing funds to them because they want to make sure there's demand out there for the product. Now, that could be true. Kickstarter is actually used as a PR platform these days. It just gets you a lot of exposure. Of course, you have to make sure it's the right kind of exposure. But, for instance, do you ever wonder why Pebble Watch always comes back? It's because they're known as that product on Kickstarter. If they were just on the open market, they would get crushed. So they use Kickstarter PR very effectively. But with PGS, it makes no sense with what they're trying to do. They're selling a lot of early bird units. But if they really want to know what the market looks like for this thing, then they need to sell it at full price. Otherwise, that's useless sales information for the investors. Throughout their campaign, they kept teasing that in their next update, they were going to disclose their investors. And then it was their next update, and the one after that. But of course, instead, they just canceled the campaign. So, I guess we'll never know who their investors were. I'm sure we haven't talked about them at all in this video. It could be anyone for all we know. So, sorry guys, I gotta leave you with that cliffhanger. I guess we'll never know. They've also made some really outrageous claims about the investors. They actually made the claim that with those investors, there is absolutely no risk in backing the PGS campaign. They say that even if it fails, the investors are going to pay the Kickstarter backers anyways. And that reeks of so much bullshit. It doesn't make any sense. Investors and philanthropists are two very different things. Investors don't do that, they want to make a profit. But maybe they could promise that because they really don't have to compensate a lot of people. Because if you ask me, those numbers are cooked. Those backers are fake. I watch a lot of these campaigns, and the PGS campaign is exceptional. They don't have a prototype, they're not forthcoming with evidence, or answers to very serious questions. And they're not even getting a lot of media coverage. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first time you've heard of them. So how'd they make so much money in the first week? Again, I watch a lot of campaigns, and if there's one thing PGS is not going to do, it is not going to defy gravity like this. I suspected fake followers from the beginning, and I don't think it's just on Kickstarter. They've been around for less than a year, but they have 94,000 Twitter followers, which could be legit. But whenever they post something, even if it's voting on changes to the hardware, their likes barely manage to break the double digits. So something is not right here. Again, the followers, the backers, the numbers just don't add up. If you ask me, it's clearly faked. And yes, that is against Kickstarter rules, but it's very hard to enforce. But more importantly, their prototypes are fake. But get this, they totally cop up to it. I've never seen anything else like it. They openly admit that it's just a bunch of off-the-shelf components. And apparently, Kickstarter has no problem with that. A lot of people have reported this project, but Kickstarter has not taken it down. But don't think they haven't reviewed it, because they did force them to take down the 3D renders. As you guys know, those realistic 3D renders are not allowed on Kickstarter, because it could mislead people into thinking that the project is further along than it actually is. You know, kind of like how a fake prototype might. In fact, way back in their early prototype, way before they ever went to Kickstarter, yours truly had a hand in identifying their fake prototype. But I shouldn't give myself so much credit because it actually wasn't that hard. Because in their pitch video, they showed off the board, and if you enhanced it enough, you could kind of make out the layers that were printed on the board, and by playing around with what those numbers might be, I was able to identify it as a Lynx EMI 8270. It's a 7-inch tablet which is also sold under the brand MDOR, and it goes for about 65 bucks. And I'm not kidding you, that's all their prototype was. Just that tablet without its case. And they still have those pictures on their Kickstarter page and in the video. And now with this Kickstarter, they have a new prototype, and let me tell you what that one is. That one is a disassembled Surface 3 tablet with an iPega Bluetooth controller, and they're able to get video onto a 5-inch screen by using the tablet's HDMI out and plugging it into this board. We know they're using this because this is their CEO's actual posts online asking how to do it. And that's how you can fake a prototype and get away with it on Kickstarter. Let me tell you, their project while it was live was a goddamn circus. They were lashing out at their critics and calling them trolls, and then they would apologize in the next post. 
They even sent out an update that said that they were under attack, and I swear you could get them to say anything if they thought it would bring in more backers. Early on in the campaign, I asked if they would have cross-compatibility with Phantom Entertainment's console, and they responded with, sure, why not? Probably not understanding that Phantom Entertainment is an infamous vaporware console. One of my favorite moments was when they were caught in a lie. So get this, they said that their CEO needed to get some serious work done. So they claim he locked himself in his office for three days. And then he had this miracle eureka moment that he could get more power out of the CPU if he adds active cooling to it. But can you imagine that? He locked himself in his office for three days. He's probably shitting in a bucket. He probably smells like Russian food when he exits. But don't worry, you don't have to imagine that because he was supposed to be in China that whole time. Yep, just a few days earlier they claimed that they sent him to China so you could meet with investors and manufacturers. So yeah, it was quite a sight to see. That's what delayed this video. I was waiting for their last update to come through and then they just cancelled. Now here's the thing, we don't know why they cancelled. I mean sure they give their excuse where they say that they want to prove that this isn't a scam, and they're tired of their critics and they want to preserve their reputation, which makes as little sense as the rest of their bullshit. A lot of people are pretty convinced that Kickstarter was finally getting on their case, and may have been asking them to show more of their prototype. So when they couldn't show enough proof, they cancelled before they got suspended. And I agree that's probably the most likely scenario. Another possibility goes back to my theory that the numbers are cooked. They used fake accounts to misrepresent how much they actually got, but as things got worse, too many real backers started leaving. Their funding chart is crazy! They were losing thousands of dollars per day, I've never seen anything like it. So the theory goes that not enough real backers were there to make collecting worthwhile, so they decided to cancel. But like I said at the beginning, just because the campaign was cancelled, that doesn't mean the project is dead. And do you want to guess why? If you've been paying attention, I'm sure you can predict this. Their console is still on track, because the mysterious investors are gonna fund it. Of course! Oh, but you can still send them your money. Immediately after cancelling the campaign, they opened up a storefront on a website called Gumroad, but they were kicked off that site within hours. So they switched to another called Tricellary, and boy, I tell you, these sites, they just inspire confidence, don't they? So yeah, they're still up if you want to give them money, but please, please, please don't. I don't know what the future holds for PGS, but I gotta tell you it doesn't look bright. Is it a scam? Yes, I do think it's a scam. It very nearly became one of the most blatant scams on Kickstarter. And as bad as it sounds, I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get to see what would happen if they took the money. Even if he had good intentions, he was clearly not associating with the right people. I don't think they ever would have been able to make this handheld, and some of their associations make me think that that wasn't their goal in the first place. If I could give any prediction for where I think PGS is going to show up next, I seriously think they're going to try again on Indiegogo. I'm surprised they didn't start there. But wherever they go, please protect yourselves. Don't get wrapped up in their fantasy. Sit down and realize that you live in Idaho where they think Bluetooth is a liberal conspiracy, and these guys live thousands of miles away in a country where the government murders people with umbrella guns. Be careful. If they take your money and run, you're screwed. And that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.